Why did you build a gladiator? They're hideous. You cut the bed here and then moved this guy in. There's a big old supercharger there. Yep. <laughs> What's up everybody? It's your dude Black Cat here. I am back in Ridgecrest. Last time I was in this garage, uh, we were talking about Darren's uh, rebirth of the 1447 OMG. And now we're talking about the birth of his new child. The Jeep Gladiator. Darren Parsons special. Here it is. Hi Darren. <laughs> Why did you build a gladiator? What's up, buddy? What up? Why did you build a gladiator? They're hideous. It's, well, it's not hideous, man. No, this thing no, is cool no, looking. Not. Okay, so literally, like, these are the dad special. You get them, you put a two inch puck lift and 37s on it, and it is great. But factory, these things are absolutely hideous. I remember when they came out, Timley and I were driving across town, and she's like, Why is that Jeep got a bed on it? It's not a truck. Why does, why does that Jeep think it's a truck? And I'm like, Oh, that is, that is hideous. And then here we are. I decided that. You know, I took a XJ, which is relatively ugly, made it into something it shouldn't have ever been. I enjoyed the crap out of that thing, and this is the evolution of that. So I wanted to take something else and make it super functional, um, kind of the West Coasty style with a little bit of um, travel, big suspension, and make it actually functional because I get I feel like a lot of people, especially in the Gladiator world, when they go to build these things, they put them on like 10 inch lifts with you know 40 40 or 42 inch tires and the problem is, is they get like they have like 250 horsepower right the thought here was to make it and do it and build it up to where it's functional and it's able to be used it's ready to be abused well, the best thing about the x is how drivable it was you could literally hop in it and go cruise down the road take the kids to school i drove it to freaking moab utah and it's not, it, it always drove so nicely. So I wanted to make this one as accommodating. So we did the PRP seats, Rockford stereo with the Stinger high 10 deck in it and everything. Big old fancy stereo. This thing's cushy in here, man. Yeah, and one of the other things that's not been done yet on these gladiators is I actually cut out the factory cage. You cut out the factory cage? I cut the factory cage out and made a traditional style tube race cage that you would see in most race trucks. And then I tied it in to the bed of it as well. You can see back here on the seats. Oh yeah. The inadequacies of a factory cage were really apparent once you start taking it apart. The whole B pillar isn't connected from cage to cage. So this gap right here, this whole area right here from the factory, yeah. had nothing in between it. There was two boxes that slid into this joint right here and it was literally just like some sheet metal holding it together so to cut it out and build an actual factory style or a, a structural cage in it is going to make a huge difference if and when i wreck it yeah um, i did some cross tubes here in the front b pillar um, c pillar obviously down mm -hmm. and i was able to basically tie it into the factory tie-in points um, mostly because i was trying to keep the aesthetics of the quiet cab Right, it's all sealed and yes. Are these uh, are these seat covers? They're seat covers. They literally just click on over the factory leather seats. And guess what? The front seats are heated and the rear seats are heated in this thing too. What? Heated seats? Bougie. Quite the step up from the XJ. Right. That was the goal. And this is a moto built bumper. Okay. Um, it actually is a six inch frame chop, so you gotta chop, chop off about six inches of the frame. Okay. And it tucks in real nicely, keeps this compact, keeps your approach angle really nice. Obviously, Flexera 4 KCs on it, um, which these are amazing lights that are super functional as well. I did spots on the front, um, and then the top on the A pillars there, I did a combo beam. 
Did a combo beam on the eight pillar? Yep. How do these do? do? They shine on the hood. No, not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad yet. All right, you're keeping that. You're still keeping that beam nice and low, so you're not getting anything from the roof. I know roof bars were so popular for a long time, and then people were like, you know what? This kind of sucks. Oh, I, I, I never, even on my race truck, I've, I've always had light behind the cab. Oh yeah, that makes so sense. Yeah. It is sitting a little high right now. Obviously, this is the combo I talked about on the front. Yeah. Um, the springs haven't broken yet. It's brand new springs. This thing literally has probably 10 miles on it, just driving across town and back. But you can see this hydraulic bump, 2514, 2514, coilover bypass. Oh, you got a 25 bump in there? Yep. Nice. And I see a winch. What's this? Is this a winch? You got a Smitty belt? Smitty belt, X20 winch. This thing's really cool. It's Bluetooth. So you freaking oh. get your remote out and it's wireless and you just literally tell it what you want to do, so. Holy mackerel, that's a different looking in, uh, engine compartment in a Jeep. There's a big old supercharger there. Yep, so that's what's squeezing this little V6 to high hell. And uh, so far so good. Again, I've, I've only probably put 10 to 15 miles on it so far, but right. it's all good. Um, your, HP your... tuners was a huge part of getting this thing done for me because ECUs after 2018 are factory locked. And so it is quite the task to get them unlocked. So HP Tuners got me all set up there and then uh, Mr. Yellenant's local buddy helped me tune her out. So we just put the graphics on it yesterday, just uh, threw a little black on it. Um, I wanted it to be kind of different. The black on the on the cab here? Uh, yeah, just wanted to, you know, I, I'd really honestly would rather if the whole top of it been white, but I feel like the black looks good on it. I think it looks good, man. You know, you, it's real simple. Black stripe on the bottom with your, uh, your bronze Sponsor stickers matching your method wheels here, and then a black top. Tell us what, what front axle is on here. This is a Curry F9, and it is a three and a half inch housing, 388 walls thickness. I mean, these are pretty cool. Obviously, I left it raw. You can get them, you order them powder coated or whatever. Right. I used all rust stuff bracketry when I built all this stuff. This is every single bracket, every single fab part on this thing is from uh, rust stuff. Made everything super nice. Did a hydraulic style steering. So on these JTs and JLs factory, they come with electric power steering. So you, one of the biggest things you have to change when you're going to bigger tires is you have to run a hydraulic style power steering setup. So I had to swap everything over to a hydraulic style with an, an actual hydraulic pump that goes off of the motor mount on the passenger side. So the electric one's just not strong enough? It's not adequate. No, if you go over like a 35 inch tire and you go out and get some rocks or something, you're, you're gonna break the box. You know, that's kind of strange considering I'm sure Jeep knows that anybody who buys one of these is probably gonna yeah, and then do you it gotta, up. You gotta it. tune it out. That's one of the things you have to turn off when you tune it is you have to turn off the electric power steering because it, it freaks out if it's not there. Interesting. The control arms will start to stay here in the front for a minute. The control arms, it's actually a Rubicon Express long arm kit. Okay. Nick Eisenhower actually built this kit. Oh, right on. At four wheel parts. He, he built in or helped design it or did he yep. design it? Designed it, built it, welded it. This is uh, one of his kits. Great job. Yeah, so Nicholas. it's really nice. It gives you a nice chromoly cross brace there yeah. where they tie into it. It makes it not nice and tidy. Okay. All the Casey under lights. Oh. Look at that. Ah! And a buggy whip. Oh, hey, buggy whip underglow. I like it. Hey, you know, that's a really good idea because these things are super strong and would probably hold up um, if you banged them with rocks or sand and dirt and all kinds of stuff. So Yeah, one wire hookup, super easy. Super easy, yeah. The they, uh, cool thing about buggy whips is they, they ground out to the mount, so there's no need to put an extra ground wire in there. You just got to put a, a power to it and then make sure that your mount is well grounded to a chassis or whatever, and you're good to go. So you can Heck yeah, man. See the rear suspension on this is obviously that's like the meat and potatoes, and that's a lot different on this thing than, yeah. than most of them. And this yeah. is like literally all built in my garage at my house. I did um, these trailing arms were based off of a DIY off-road design. Okay. That um, rough stuff actually cut out and welded together for me. They wanted the opportunity to do that, so I let them have it, and that okay. was really cool that they did that. It Heck turned yeah. out nice. Save you some time. Absolutely. And then you have a 3.0 bypass. 3.0 bypass, 2.5 coilover, 2.5 bump. And, and you were able to do it, mount them without having to go into the cab. Yep, I mounted them. You got it's kind of a pain in the butt. You gotta take the bypass off to get the coilover off, but it is pretty oh, yeah. nice. Oh yeah, you see, it's mounted sideways in there, and then also oh, you gotta take the bypass off to get to the coilover. Yeah, that's, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. 
Okay. I wanted a functional bed. I do think the idea of a Jeep truck is still really stupid, but um, I didn't want no didn't want to get rid of the bed entirely. So we got enough room there for a cooler and some yeah. other stuff. And I'll, I'll do some um, tie down points here on the sides. I plan on a raptor lining this bed all in and making it all look factory. Yeah, because you you made you made these. You made these inserts or whatever yes. you want to call them, bedsides, right. inner, inner bedsides. Here on the back, I want to keep it real low profile, so I did um, a myelin tube style bumper with you know, a flexible bicycle plate, so it hits something. And oh, okay. Up and down. Oh, we got you. Just something little stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the, you can see under there, it's a Jazz 32 gallon Jeep Speed Cell. Okay, there Jackson you go. Jackson Motorsports makes, uh, has that file. He's, so graciously let me use now. I use the same exact style setup in the XJ and it worked great. Cool. And it's got the factory fuel pump in it. All the evaporative systems all hooked up. All the emission systems are working. They're all talking to each other. Um, in the 10 miles, it hasn't even thrown a coat, so I'm actually really happy about that. Excellent, yeah. You Definitely. still have, I see factory backup sensors are still yep. Are still here. That's this guy right here, these little dots. Yep, left and those in there. And I see a, a skid. Yeah. Oh, it's from the homies at Warfab. I know this guy. Yeah, he's super cool. He sent me that thing, and I figured I'd like to keep on using it. So, obviously, it's a trailer plug too. You know, like pull yeah. out, pull yeah. trailer behind pull it. Trailer. You can. Here's a tie point on the top. Yeah. In case uh, you gotta get pulled out or something, you got a nice rigid spot there to to tie onto. Cool. And you got that uh, Pro Eagle. That's the big uh, big wheel jack there in the bed. Okay. I mounted that. It's uh, bolted to the to the bed, so it, and it's quick release mount. So you pop that sucker out. Excellent. Um, KC light bar here in the back. I did angle it a little up so it's not in the eyes of people as you drive down the road. But you see your spare tire. Uh, you had you had something interesting about this. I remember seeing on your Instagram, right? This yeah. is like removable, so you can put the tailgate back on. So this this wheel come out, and it's just the mount in there at that point, and then the tailgate will go on, and you can also take the mount out as well. So like when I'm going on like family vacation, I want to put all the mountain bikes in the back here, and like um, it'll it'll be nice just to be able to take this entire setup out and um, be able to slap the tailgate on it. The camera's in the tailgate. It has um, the light in it still. Everything will. Everything functions right, and uh, you take this completely out of the way. But for most of the time, I'll probably leave this back here just because I want the additional weight over the back of it. This wheel tire combo is easily 160 pounds or so, um, and then add the mount under there, it's probably another 10 pounds. So that additional weight over the back of this thing this is going to make it sit a lot better. Right, right, right. What I really want to do with this. Did you ever think about maybe if, if you wanted more weight, putting another tire back here? And uh, it is what it is. It's 50-50. I had it on the scales. This piggy weighs in at 6,300 pounds, so... Um, Holy mackerel. It's got a lot of sit in it. It'll, <laughs> That's, it'll stay planted for sure. <laughs> That's a fat Jeep. Yeah. 6,300 pounds. So you did what they call a, a bobtail, right? I uh, uh, bobbed the bed, yes. You bobbed the bed. So basically what he did is you, you cut the bed here and then moved this guy in so it didn't stick out so far. You had a better departure angle, right, or whatever, and then you and you also move this, right? This was right. up there. So this this used to be up here, okay. um, which obviously is just in shocks now. So right. um, I wanted to keep it functional, so I moved it to back here, and it, it feels like a factory car still. Again, like I hooked up all the emission stuff to it, so it's all it's all functional. Okay. Um, with the factory style fuel pump mounted into the ja the Jeep Speed cell from Jazz. But yeah, I, I took out six inches. You know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll go as much as 10 or even 12 inches out of the bed. Um, I I wanted it to look different. You know, I don't want to take a bunch of length off of it because I wanted to have the fuel cell as far back as possible Correct, and have yeah. the spare far back so mm -hmm. I can get that rear weight that I need for right. this thing to sit and, and what I'm hoping to do with it. Yeah, and and proportionally, man, I think it, uh, I think it looks, I think it looks really good. Thank you. What's the point of the pin? Why don't you just put like a bolt through there? Oh, just so you can take it off quick, because the top still comes off. Of this. Oh, oh, so you can, so you can, you can remove this and then take the top off still. Yeah. Oh, right on. So that yeah, makes the sense. Top, they call them freedom panels. Those, those come out in literally less than like 15 seconds. And then the back here, you just would take that pin out. Um, you gotta take this. There's two bolts holding the wing on here. You take out those two bolts. The tube uh, slides right out. It's a slip joint, so there's a, this is inch and three quarter. It's inch and a half sleeve that goes into the inch and three quarter main cage. So it just slides in there and then clips down here on the bottom. So again, that's, you know, completes the look and it gives me that 
Yeah, and then, this th and then this thing turns full on convertible. Yeah, and you take the whole top off of it, absolutely. And it looks really good with the whole top off of it because the custom cage I built in it is sits a lot lower. Yeah, so it's got a better the profile. factory cage, so it looks so good with the top off of this thing. It's going to look so amazing this summer. I can't wait to take the top off and just have, yeah, that, yeah. have that squatted kind of. Um, how about these? Uh, these obviously aren't factory So these started flares. out as like uh, Fabtech um, fenders I got from through four parts and um, I made them custom. So the factory bed line, these things sat about four inches lower. Okay. But I had to move them up because we have uh, yeah. 10 inches of up travel from ride height in the back. So with that up travel, I needed to move the fender up. So um, that's why I had to make a whole new inner fender for it gotcha. as well. It's just because of all the up in this thing. Yeah, it makes sense. Then what about these uh, these rock sliders? I like these rock sliders. Yeah, so these are Moto built. These are uh, literally just like freaking takes about a half hour aside. You just drill in some nut zerts and freaking hang it on there, and it attaches to the factory body mounts underneath. Okay. And it creates a real strong um, yeah. rock slider. It also helps with like just having a little step right there. Yeah, yeah. I say it's got a, it's got enough got enough on there where you know I got a, I have a size 12 boot and I could get all kinds of grip on there. What's some other stuff that we might have missed in the rear suspension? You said something about these, these sway bars. Dude, dude billet sway bars. Yeah, so this Kibbe is Tech. a, yeah, it's a Kibbe Tech bar, uh, or sway bar end, basically. Um, and it goes to a factory, off the shelf, trophy truck style sway bar. So the same thing that you would, or that's the exact same thing I run in my race truck that you'd run in most trophy trucks. Okay. I called an order from CarTech. I made mounts for it with all the rough stuff products I got and then I slapped these Kibitech billet arms on them and it's just a real solid way to do it. I knew that I could count on that working because I know it works well in my truck. Yeah, PRP limit straps, front and rear. The, this, yeah, the Something that's cool yeah. about this is that it is actually utilizing a factory parking brake even still. Oh really? So the factory parking brake works with the Curry housings yeah, so this is another Curry F9 back here. These are eight lugs, so these are like one ton axles? Yeah, so they have a unit bearing on the outside. It's a full floater style unit bearing on, okay. the, back, on the outside. It's super strong. It's very simple to work on. Uh, it's something you can get parts for readily. And uh, it's, yeah, obviously an eight lug, so it's plenty strong. High pinion? The rear is a low pinion. But the front, um, the front was a high pinion, right? The front's a high pinion, reverse cut 10, yeah. And the rear is a low pinion. Um, I'm just not all too worried about hitting that diff with uh, 40 inch tires. Yeah, for sure. Um, it is of concern, obviously, but um, the high pinion, you lose strength. There's no way around it. Mm. And um, I, just, I want this thing to be strong. I want it to be reliable. Right. The XJ, I never had a problem dragging the diff, and it was a low pinion, so I'm not all too concerned about it. Was the XJ on 40s too? No, it was on 37s, yeah. but it had the same style rear end housing from Rough Stuff with a with a low pinion nine. Okay. Um, with Evan Waller stuff in it, so did uh, these are Method 312 wheels. These are actual real beadlock wheels. Obviously, these are the same tires that are on my race truck. BFG KR3 40 yeah. inch tire. And these are so these are race. Race tire compound. Yeah, so they're not stickies. I didn't want to put stickies on here. I've, I've ran stickies before on the street, um, and they flat spot really bad. Yeah. So this is a harder compound. Gotcha. I do have stickies over there if we want to go get. But uh, this thing isn't. What I, what I learned from the XJ, um, I did learn from it. I learned that I do like uh, more of the high speed stuff. I want to have four wheel drive. I want to be able to get up in some in some rock trails and stuff. But realistically, what I enjoy is going fast. This is my what my narrative as to accomplishing that goal and I basically wanted it to have the same kind of functionality with being able to be up in rocks and getting twisted up in four wheel drive but that's not something that I really enjoy doing I don't enjoy going up and getting rocks and freaking just being stuck there for hours cringing and uh, so anyways this <laughs> and scraping and, and scraping creaking and, and you just hear things breaking <laughs> yeah. it's like uh, I just don't Cracking. really it's not all too much fun to me so this is a crossover a little bit more towards the high speed thing which is what I enjoy more um, that I can obviously run the family around in and have yeah, a good man. time yeah makes sense makes sense so Darren's ready to go out and get it dirty. Anything else you want to say about this thing, dude? Well, Darren wants to go get this thing dirty. Um, we want to take some photos and get some shots of it getting dirty. So we're running out of daylight. We got, I don't know, not very long. So Darren, 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hurry up. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs>